Good afternoon. Just checking the door. A few people are squeaking in right before the deadline here. So. It's great to see so many faces uh, again, and um, I'm grateful to have time with you all this afternoon. So, David Newton, our chaplain, had a, an appointment, a medical appointment um, checkup, uh, but he wasn't able to join us. But I asked him to tap a tap one of his uh, one of his close uh, confidants to, to help us out with a prayer this, this afternoon. So I'm going to ask Sue Cobb to come up. She's going to help lead us in prayer. Sue is on our spiritual life council, and she's offered to uh, to help us out with uh, an opening of prayer this morning, this afternoon. I'm sorry. So Sue. start with just a little lead in to our prayer and then go right into it. Uh, a couple of months ago, my little three-year-old great-granddaughter was here with her folks to spend the afternoon. They live in the area. And we were going down the hall to eat. And uh, she was looking around and she said, it's a long way to eat. <laughs> and she thinks all of this is my house <laughs> and that all of you live here with me. <laughs> and so with that, um, Father God, we come as some of the people in your family and your children. We want to praise and thank you today for all the employees here at Rolling Green. Uh, who work so diligently and many of them give so much more than their job duties require to provide us with uh, good food and uh, security and transportation and health assistance and uh, housekeeping and maintenance and wonderful activities and we thank you also for all of our department heads who work together as such a great team and they're always looking for ways to make uh, things more comfortable for us and also to make Rolling Green really a good home and not just a house. And we thank you for Ryan. We know he depends on you for his guidance and for help as he leads us daily uh, and faces so many challenges uh, in working in such a large community. Help us to realize how important all of these people are for us and we and help us to appreciate them more each day. Help us also to be kinder and more loving and more caring of each other. For we pray this in your name from whom all of our blessings come. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. All right, I'm going to continue on my theme of making sure this meeting's not just about me. So um, I'm going to bring up folks from the team. So we're going to have Shannon and then Amy and then Anna Grace are going to speak and then I'll then I'll jump in. So Shannon, you ready? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm having my clinic team come up here so you can see our faces. Um, myself, I'm Shannon, I'm the Resident Health Services Director. And I have Jane, a familiar face you're aware of, um, here in the clinic as our clinic nurse. And our new Marlene, she is working in the clinic on Fridays. We are very excited to have her on the staff. Um, so please stop by the clinic. Um, right now she's training during the week. But on Fridays, please stop by and greet her and say hello. Um, I'm going to let Marlene come up for a minute and kind of tell you your, her background. Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Marlene Rapp. I'm originally from uh, New Jersey. I moved here uh, five years ago to uh, Taylor's. Um, I had 44 years of nursing experience. <laughs> Most of that was uh, in an acute care setting in a hospital in uh, intensive care. Um, then I had multiple supervisory positions as well. And um, unfortunately, the hospital I was working at wound up closing, so I had, had to move on. And I worked in a surgery center for 10 years, as well as in a hospital uh, surgery unit before I moved down here. 
and since I've been here, um, I thought I was ready for retirement, but I found that I really did miss um, being being around people and doing something useful and productive. So decided to start seeking something else to do, and I um, worked um, giving out uh, the COVID vaccine for Prisma for about a year, and then I went and volunteered my time at Taylor's for medical clinic. And again, I thought I was done. I said, okay, you know. <laughs> and after a few months, I was like, all right, I gotta find something else to do. And this kind of really just fell into my lap. And I'm happy to be here. And uh, everybody has been so welcoming from my fellow staff members as well as the residents. <laughs> so thank you. And I hope to see you in the, in the clinic on Fridays. Thank you, Marley. I wanted to say thank you all for coming to Linda Shuler's celebration. Um, the love was definitely felt there. There were so many of you there. I know she felt loved and appreciated. So thank you for coming because y'all truly made it a wonderful event. Um, in her honor, I don't if you may have heard, we're having a Shuler shuttle. It's our new golf cart. Um, we're excited because it has a small pep in its step, not too fast, but it gets us to you a little quicker, which we enjoy. But we are working on decal, so it will actually say the Schuler shuttle. So um, that is in her honor, and we do appreciate that was from resident donations. Um, so we are excited about that. Also, um, wanted to mention a couple things. So Prisma has been in our clinic for um, almost nine months. And I look today, we have 50 residents who see her as primary care, and a lot of you have come as for acute visits. So it's going really well. Um, we appreciate all your support, and we hope that you find that it is helpful to you having them on site. Um, the blood pressure clinic, I know it was a big event. I promise it's coming back. Um, Marlene's going to lead it for us so that she can meet y'all. That could be a great event that she can see you at on Fridays, but we're just working through those details. So it will come um, in the coming, I'm hoping in October. But in the meantime, if you need your blood pressure check, please come to the clinic Monday through Friday, 7 to 3, and we can take it for you. Also, flu shot sign-ups. We had them yesterday and today. Um, they will be September 26th, and, which is Tuesday, and September um, 28th, which is a Thursday. If you didn't sign up, no sweating. Come see us in the clinic. We have tons of open spots. So please come see us in the clinic um, in the next week and we'll get you signed up. Also, we are working on the COVID booster. Um, I reached out to CVS and they said they have limited quantities right now in the stores. And it, as um, the weeks and months to come, they'll have it for on-site vaccine clinics like we have here. So working on that, hope that we can get a COVID booster clinic in the coming months for y'all. We believe that most insurance will cover that 100%. I know there was talk that there may not, but it looks like most insurance will cover 100%. Also, another vaccine that kind of has buzz right now is the RSV vaccine. Um, it is coming in the beginning of October. Right now, we are not making plans to offer it as a, as a clinic, but we are always open. If we find the needs there, we will definitely do it. Right now, though, we have heard that it is not covered unless you have Medicare Part D plan. I'm not sure about the Advantage plan, so we definitely recommend you reaching out to your insurance to see if it's covered. We've heard it ranges between $180 and $295. Um, so just to give you a heads up, so you don't get a sticker shock. So definitely check with your insurance company before you um, sign up for that. But I'm sure it will kind of be like the shingles vaccine at first. It cost a lot and now insurance are covering it. So as time goes on, I'm sure it will be covered. Um, also wanted to let follow up. I know there were some emergency call questions last time. Wanted to kind of touch on that. During the hours that the clinic is not open, security will answer with the support of the healthcare team, um, meaning that they may come with a nurse or they may have a CNA with them that has a virtual capability of an iPad with the nurse. So we will definitely be answering you. It just may be a different, it may not always be the nurse, but they will be a phone call away and be help supporting that call. Also, we wanted to remind you to make sure when you do pressure pendant that they truly are emergencies. 
you know, we've gotten some for just a blood pressure check or wanting a COVID test or just minor things that maybe during the week like nausea, call us in the clinic. We promise to answer your calls. We will call you back the same day. Um, so just give us a call in the clinic. It helps us if we have our emergency pager going off at all the times we can't get to you as fast and we're not in the clinic to answer those calls who need us. Um, and also in saying COVID tests, we do not give resident COVID tests at this time, but we can help you. They're very readily available in the stores. Um, that is all I had. Any questions or concerns for the clinic? Yes. What is RSV? It's a respiratory virus. Um, it can't. Oh, you see a lot in babies, but a lot of adults are getting it now. Seniors are likely to have problems with breathing. Right, right. This, it has been recommended for them. But it's a new vaccine. Yes. Yes. So the respiratory syncytial virus, that's RSV, again, is one of the leading causes of hospitalization and death due to respiratory disease, particularly in infants. Uh, but immunity is not totally complete. Mm -hmm. And so, again, uh, one may see it in adults or mm -hmm. even seniors. Um, and I think there was a real resurgence of RSV instance around the, after the, um, is associated with the coronavirus because uh, people were quarantined or kids weren't going to school mm -hmm. and so they weren't getting exposed to the virus and then all of a sudden people started mixing it's a big resurgence mm -hmm. of disease mm -hmm. in younger people as well as mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Other questions, concerns? She was explaining what RSV is. It's hard to hear without the mic. Do we have the handheld mic? Yeah, I cannot. I was just curious. I was looking it up. There's a website called RSV and Me, which is from GlaxoSmithKline, which is a pharmaceutical company, and it, it answers the question of what is RSV? It's respiratory syncytial virus. It's a common contagious virus that usually causes mild symptoms, but in older adults and adults with certain underlying conditions, RSV can cause severe infections. What are the symptoms? Can range from mild to severe, can last up to two weeks. Symptoms, fever, coughs, or throat, runny nose, congestion, headache, tiredness. So um, that's a little bit more information. It can be serious. Fortunately, vaccination is available. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about vaccination and other ways to protect yourself and others from RSV. So that's again from GlaxoSmithKline. I'm assuming that they have their own vaccine. It's called rsvandme.com. You can learn a little bit more about it. So. And I did see, and looking about the vaccine, I did see that they recommend you not getting it two weeks between another vaccine. So I know right now we're getting flu, we're getting the new COVID booster. So just make aware, you know, sometimes you can combine those vaccines, but with the RSV, they say to at least wait two weeks after between getting another vaccine. Yeah. Have you seen any cases in Rollerblade? Any other questions, concerns? We have a couple, but they're doing well. Um, they're not hospitalized, which is great. Repeat the question. Any COVID cases right now in Rolling Green? We have a few, but they're not hospitalized and they're doing well. Yes. Yes. Do you have the antiviral drug for uh, coronavirus infections here? No, we don't have any medications here on campus. Um, she asked if we had the medication antiviral against COVID on campus, but we don't, we can't prescribe. Now our clinic, you could see our clinic nurse practitioner and she could prescribe it. You could do an acute visit mm -hmm. and she could get it. CVS has them. Yeah. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. Thank you. Amy, you ready? I'm Good afternoon. <laughs> um, so I have some exciting news. We turned in the paperwork 
um, for the final approval of our brand new 14 passenger bus with a lift. So we're just waiting for that final approval. Um, and then what will happen is we will put in our order and then they actually have to build our bus. So it probably will not be available until January or February of next year. But it's still exciting to think <coughs> that it is coming. So um, I feel like we've needed this for a while. Um, it's important to have another bus with a lift on it. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Now the process that we went through um, to make sure that this was the bus that we really wanted, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, a group went out to Georgia to look at a couple of buses. Um, I, I had asked about, I think, I think I asked probably around 15 residents um, if they could go with us as kind of like a group um, to, because I wanted to incorporate some of the residents in, in selecting the things that we needed in the bus. Um, of those 15, I had three that were able to go. So we had Pat Pierce, Vern Muma, and Bill Albert. And so um, all three of them, along with me and um, the three bus drivers that, that I have here, um, Tom, Stan, and Carl, uh, we went out and we took the bus and we went and looked at some of the buses. We looked at some of the options. Um, they asked some really good questions. Um, and the guy that we were working with was really good. So, um, so after that, um, we went to lunch and, and we came home. So it was a really good trip. So I was really happy that some of the residents could go with us and be a part of that discussion and the decisions that, because I mean, it's important to us that we have you involved. Um, so, and then, um, does anybody have any questions about the bus before I move on? No? Okay. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is kind of our Touchtown cleanup. So Touchtown is our portal. And um, just since we've started using the portal, um, uh, there's a bunch of different people who put things into the portal. And so there's not a whole lot of consistency because we all do things differently. And so I'd like to thank Diane Schwartz and also Bob Torres because they've been helping us clean up some of these things on our portal and making them a little bit more consistent, especially the resident directory. So just having things in there that are all the same. Um, kind of like the, um, if you look up somebody that would be in B building, um, you may, I may have put it in as B dash building and somebody else may have put it in as B building. And so they went through and just made sure that everything was consistent. So um, hopefully maybe we can put out something that just tells you how you can look up people in the resident directory. But we're still working on this and on, on other aspects, but I just wanted to thank them for helping us with that. And then um, Ollie classes started this week. Um, we're really happy that we had a really good turnout. Um, it's really important that we have participation because we want them to keep coming out here. Um, it's really important to our residents, um, you know, and, and in our community to make sure that Rolling Green's name is out in the community. Um, but it's been a really good partnership and it started this week, so I hope that that will continue um, for years to come and it hopefully get bigger than it is now. We have three classes and, um, you know, you never know, we may have more than that someday. So, any questions? What is all these things for? I knew y'all were going to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Osher Life Long. I know what it is. I knew somebody was going to ask me that. So it's um, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. And it is, um, they offer classes for seniors, and, and it would be co college level classes, um, classes that could be of interest. Like I know they've done leather working, um, photography. Um, but they also have our classes here. Um, one of them is Broadway, um, a Broadway behind the curtain. Um, the other one is interesting characters. Those are on Tuesdays. And then the one they had today was um, the religions of India. So. There's a small cost, right? <laughs> there is a cost. So there's it's a sixty-five dollar fee, um, a membership fee, and then each class is fifty-five dollars. But we do have um, the catalogs up at both of the desks if, if you're interested. I think you can still register even if you haven't. Any questions? Okay. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to kind of touch base so with occupancy and everything that's going on within the licensed areas and give you a few updates. I know that um, not necessarily everything over there is always included with independent living, so I feel like it's important for you to be a part of those conversations. So I wanted to start with occupancy. Um, so as of today, we have 46 out of 48 beds occupied within health care. Um, which is our long-term care setting, which equivalates to 98% occupied. We actually had an admission today, so we're at 47 out of 48. We have a resident coming back from Rolling Green, back in, from Rolling Green went out and coming back in for health care this afternoon. So we have an admission this afternoon. And then in rehab, we have 17 out of 22 beds occupied. So those are our Medicare certified beds. So that's usually for your Part A stays. So if you go out to the hospital and need a rehab stay, those are the beds that you would occupy. Um, so we are 17 out of 22 beds occupied in rehab, and then 25 out of 28 beds or apartments occupied in Cedars Assisted Living, and then 15 out of 22 beds occupied in Evergreen Place. So we have a lot of movement going on. We have a lot of residents that may be in rehab right now, moving over to long-term care, or moving over to assisted living. So it's very important when you're out, especially if you have it, you're having a planned surgery, it's good for Shannon to be a part of that, to just kind of give her a heads up in case you'll need a rehab stay for any reason. So it's good for her to be a part of those conversations to just make sure our team in healthcare and rehab know to kind of put a put a spot down for you, per se. Um, I'm happy to say there are currently no COVID cases within any of the licensed areas, so that's always good to hear. We also, we don't have any staff members positive either. Um, and I wanted to touch base of anybody in here, and I know there are a few who have had rehab stays. You may be aware of um, Allie Ranilia. She is our unit manager within rehab, so she kind of oversees what's going on over there and help with our director of nursing and assistant director of nursing. She is leaving us, unfortunately, so she, her last day will be September 22nd. She's moving to Charlotte with her husband. So um, we're currently in the search for a new unit manager, but that space right now will be filled with responsibilities will kind of be split between our different leadership roles within nursing. So we hate to see her go. Um, she is a very big asset to our team, so we're um, taking our time to fill that position as long as it may take. So I wanted to touch base on um, the, we're hosting a bunch of nursing students right now throughout the fall semester. We actually have four um, colleges, universities that are utilizing Rolling Green within the healthcare aspect, long-term care, or rehab, so a short skilled stay. So we have Bob Jones University, and then Greenville Tech, and then ECPI, which is an online school that utilizes our services as well, and then um, Mary Black College of Nursing, which is through USC Upstate. So those are our four right now. So we have a few are in the licensed areas and see any new faces, anybody in. Um, younger and, and all color, one color scrub, that's probably usually who those people are gonna be. So they're here to learn. They may be in the beginning of their nursing career. They may be help, and towards the end, they could be getting licensed. They may be on med carts. They may be learning how to assist with assisted um, activities of daily living. So just, they may have their hands in a lot of different aspects in nursing, all at different levels. So we're excited to host them, to continue to show them this um, area within healthcare. Usually our nursing students go straight into a hospital setting, into the acute setting, so it's good to have the experience within the long-term care setting. And then I wanna close on just a really good note. So we do, uh, we encourage residents and family members to do Google reviews when they leave. Um, and we had a resident that, family member that wrote a Google review and I just want to read it to you um, and let you kind of um, 
sit on it. So this is from Miss Mindtree. She was a resident that we had within healthcare. She lived here for about six months and she passed away unfortunately in the beginning of August. But this is from her daughter, April. I'm so grateful for the concern and care shown by the staff to my mother during her time at Rolling Green Village. She was in skilled nursing care for about six months. She received such outstanding nursing care, always delivered with great kindness and compassion. They helped her acclimate to her new environment successfully, and physical therapy was able to get her safely ambulating. She truly enjoyed the activities and the skilled care team worked with us to address all of her needs. Additionally, the spiritual care as well as the excellent food nourished her in all ways. I highly recommend Rolling Green Village. So those are always good to just kind of ponder on. Um, we know that transitions are never easy for a family or a resident, so it's good to have that experience. This was written about a week after Miss Mindtree passed. So there's, there's a lot going on in those couple of weeks after a, after a passing and for a daughter to take her time to, to look back on this day and say what Rolling Green did for her. So I just wanted to share that to the group as a whole. Um, that's all I have. Is there any questions or concerns from anyone? Yeah? Thank you. <coughs> all right. Thank you, Anna Grace. Um, just want to share with you that the uh, the feedback from the family member from this mind tree kind of it kind of hits me. It's um. It's difficult when somebody comes in and they're only with us for six months. You know, when folks move into the house center. You know, you'd hope that they can they can live a little bit longer. But just the the way that she approached that transition and how positively she looked at what we could do, uh, given where her her mom was in the disease process, is just pretty special. So it's really good to hear that straight from uh, straight from a resident's family member. So uh, I think it just highlights the the impact that we can make on the people that we serve here. Um, across all areas of Rolling Green, but even more so in the health center. So um, it's just great to hear. And, and that comes back to the great nurses and the great team that we have that were discussed in that, in that review. So just extremely, uh, extremely grateful to have the opportunity to support the, that family at a difficult, difficult time. So I want to thank Anna Grace for the work that she's doing and, and the whole team. They really are making a difference. Um, to see 98% occupancy in the health center is the first time we've been able to do that since pre-COVID, we've had a lot of challenges. Uh, but to see that, that number come up, you know, the more people we serve, the more that our mission is served, and the more people we can help at a difficult time. So that's great, really great to see. So I appreciate the work that Anna Grace is, is doing. She mentioned about Allie Renia, that's Victor's wife. You know, folks know Victor from working in our wellness team. Um, it's, it's bittersweet. Allie actually was a CNA here before she became a nurse and she was, she's just an amazing amazing person and amazing nurse so it's bittersweet to see her leave um, so Victor was promoted he's working for Vanguard and uh, he was promoted and moved to Charlotte so just visited with her on Tuesday uh, I'm hopeful I opened a door for her at an LCS community in Charlotte um, in the South Park area there's a there's an LCS community life care services it's there so Hopefully she'll land softly. I know that she will. She does an amazing job for us, and it's hard to see her go, but we definitely understand the reason for the move. So I um, also want to mention to you about Ollie. I think it's a great, a great partnership to have them here. We don't make any money off of them being here, but we do think it's a huge way that we can let folks know about who we are. Maybe they'd be introduced to Rolling Green Village. Also on the nurse, uh, the, the nurse clinical side, that's also a really important, a really important element of, of what we do. I believe that's part of our, our social accountability and our community benefit, that we provide an opportunity for folks to come here and to see the way that we provide care. I think that changes the way that they look at nursing homes when they, when they leave Rolling Green Village. Um, folks know Tracy Salters from Home Care and Community Life Team. Um, her son came through on a clinical rotation and he went back and told his mom that she needed to go work here. <laughs> she really did. And she's been here for how many years? At least five years. And she's gone from being a rehab nurse to working in Evergreen Place as a med tech to now being the supervisor working with home care. It's just an amazing, 
amazing person that we wouldn't have here with us if we didn't have that opportunity. So it's not always about the person that comes in. Maybe we don't hire as many of those folks, but we do change that mindset around who we are and what we do. And in that case, Tracy's an amazing, amazing person, an amazing employee that, that we have because we had that Greenville Tech class come through and, and her son, who's now a medical student at Emory, I believe he's doing his rotation at Emory, just an amazing, um, amazing person as well. A med student at Emory said, Mom, you need to go, go work at Rolling Green Village. So, pretty neat. <laughs> I think that was all I had just to, to piggyback off of what the other folks were, were talking about. I think it's really neat that Amy engaged our residents to be a part of helping us find that, that next bus. So, um, and they went out to lunch too. So, <laughs> <laughs> we got a really good deal, trade in deal. We were extremely happy. To see that, so we will be trading in the old bus to uh, to get the new bus. We wish we could get it sooner, but we're just gonna have to be patient. So, thank you all for uh, for your work and for uh, sharing a few things for us today. Wanted to uh, jump in to my updates here. The prayer chapel don't have any major updates here, um, so we're still just kind of in a holding pattern. The, uh, the planning division of Greenville County still has the paperwork on their desk. You know, we are having internal discussions around what that's going to look like, uh, but no formal decisions have been made and we're just kind of still, still in, a, in a holding pattern there. So, no news to share there. I want to talk a little bit about dining services, another great month. I mentioned last month we served 20,000 meals in July. This month, in August, I'm sorry, 21,000 meals that were served, which is, again, above and beyond anything we've, we've ever done here. I know with the, with the new apartments, we've got two kitchens, there's more dining, you know, more dining room space, but their commitment to, to you know, providing over 21,000 meals, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. So I just want to say wow and, and thank you for their hard effort uh, to make that happen. Um, it's it's great to see. Uh, I talked to one of our board members on Monday, and he mentioned being here on Sunday, and just seeing a really great a great feeling in, in the dining room. People being happy, and just that that life is is really what we've been needing for a number of years. So it's great to see us at that place and consistently be there. We really we hope that this is the new normal, as far as the activity in the dining room and what what people really want. So. In addition to the dining services, one of the one of the changes that that I want you all to be aware of that this week Karen started. She is the new independent living dining room manager. Has anybody met Karen yet? Hopefully, some folks have. She's got a really great accent. So um, she is. Uh, she's just. I think she actually started on Monday. Um, we're excited to have her here. I know we've had a, a bit of turnover in that role. And that's a concern for us, you know, and, and Bruce and I visited to talk about how we can set Karen up for success and how we can make sure that, you know, she, she gets, gets off to a good start, she gets trained, she understands all the different elements uh, of what's needed. Uh, it's, it's, we do things a little differently when it comes to, to the food and how we deliver than you would typically see in other settings like ours. But, we're excited about Karen. Uh, I just visited with her a little bit ago. She said she's off to a great start. Folks have been really welcoming and, and she's glad to be here. So her name is Karen. Um, I think it's Clisham. Anybody correct me? Clisham is her last name. So Spectrum Wi-Fi. Um, I was actually in a couple people's apartments today helping with that. Um, we had to switch over 200 plus homes to assist with this Wi-Fi change. So it was not something that we asked for. It was something that Spectrum said, hey, this is great news. You're gonna upgrade your network. And, and then we have to do all the legwork. So um, over the last couple of weeks, you know, we sent out that notice. We had a little bit of hiccups. I think we're still working through a few hiccups in the cottages, depending upon what type of devices you all have in your home. Um, Originally, the F building, they, they set up and they switched it with our assisted living. So we worked out the kinks. We are coming down to that last day. So we want to make sure folks know if they have any questions, you know, we can come to the, the comments front desk. We do have 
individual account passwords for each resident in your residence. This applies to the apartments and to the cottages. Um, and so if folks have a question about that or need assistance, we can assist you there. Um, but we had a full team. I didn't feel it was right to have just Amy and, and, uh, and the folks within facilities doing it. You know, So I raised my hand and helped out a few. I know Lindsay was helping. I know Carrie was helping. I think Ryan Hill was helping today. Uh, I think David and Lexi were helping. You know, it really does help to have a few folks that uh, are a little more tech savvy help to jump in between uh, Alexa devices, printers, TVs, smart TVs, and, and smartphones. So I hope that we're to the end of that. Uh, make sure that if, if you're aware with that letter, the, the networks look very similar. So RGV resident is the old one. And that's going to disappear as a tomorrow. RGV resident Wi-Fi is the new one. So it added the Wi-Fi at the end, and that's the one that you need to be connected to. So if you need a copy of that letter, we can get that for you. If you need a refresher on what your password is, we can get that for you as well. It should just be one time. You set up one time on your device. You should not have to continue to, to can continue to uh, enter that day in and day out. But if you have some issues, please let us know. The resident satisfaction survey. So I wanted to make sure folks got my letter that was dated on the 7th. It looks like this. Um, I think you also might see some of the table tents up in the dining room. So the resident satisfaction survey. Every year we do a satisfaction survey at Rolling Green Village. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. One year we do residents, the next year we do staff. So every year there's some type of survey. It's an opportunity for us to hear from you. So. Every two years we do that for residents. We want to make sure that, that you do take the time to tell us what you think. If you like certain things, please let us know. If you don't like certain things, also let us know. So in the letter it talked about the importance of putting a four or a five, being on the higher on the spectrum, or a one or a two. To not put a three, because that's kind of indifferent. But we also do want to, want to receive those comments as well folks that have any feedback that could be good and feedback that can help us improve. We do get a copy of those results after a few weeks. We do share those amongst the team to learn areas that we're doing well and areas that we can improve upon. So this year we want to do a little bit, a little bit different. We're hopeful to borrow a couple of golf carts from some residents and deliver them door to door. So again, in my, my philosophy of you know, having multiple people on deck, we're gonna have department heads that are gonna pair up. We're gonna deliver to either your apartment door or to your house on the 22nd. It's actually Anna Grace's birthday. Um, so it'll, it'll be fun though. If you're not there, we'll put it in your mailbox. Um, we wanna give you two weeks to hand that in. If you hand it into the front desk, you'll get a, a, a coupon for a, a resident or a, a resident meal, which is, uh, which is nice. You'll also get uh, a, a um, a, what's the terminology I used? A small ticket that will put you in a drawing for a resident experience. So we're going to give away a resident experience. So one of our upcoming trips, you know, that Amy does, we're going to allow you to take you, yourself, and a friend on a trip on us. So I think that's kind of a neat thing too. So we want to thank you with a little bit of food and then also put an experience in there too to maybe encourage you to make sure you, you hand it in. You know, we feel strongly the more people we can hear from, the better. So, a little bit of extra to say thank you for your time. I know sometimes people don't like filling out surveys, but we really do think it's important. It is every two years, and we look forward to hearing from you. So, um, just want to make sure you knew that's coming. Um, so, on October 6th will be when the, when the survey period ends, and we should receive those results. Um, we will also share those results with you, and, and we want you to be aware that, that your, your feedback is anonymous, your name is not being asked, just where you live, so we want to see where you live, independent living, assisted living, um, but we do, we will share you some of the themes that we've heard, and then also some of the ways that we're responding to those themes and how we are addressing them, so it is important, and it is uh, something that we look forward to, and want to get your, want to get your voice this year again, so. Medicare open enrollment. I want to make sure everybody knew that that's around the corner, October 15th to December 7th. This is something that I feel pretty strongly about. You need to make sure you understand what you're signing up for. 
um, as a former administrator in the health center, unfortunately, sometimes folks don't know what they have until they've been through an experience that is not, does not meet their expectations. So be mindful, um, you know, if you're switching from Medicare traditional to an Advantage plan, do your homework. Um, it, you have the ability every single year to make changes. So just make sure you don't just respond to the commercials. Make sure you do your research. Make sure you look into that. Um, we've had some unfortunate experiences for folks that have switched over to one of the Advantage plans that folks don't typically get the time that they would want to recover. Typically, if you have an Advantage plan, there's a nurse case manager that's in the middle between you and us, and they're saying you're ready to go. And it may be before the time you're ready to go. So. Uh, if you want to visit with me separately, I'm happy to share some other details, but that's coming around the corner. You'll start to see a lot of the commercials all throughout the day. Um, and make sure you do your research before you, you make that final decision. As far as our budget planning and our, our, uh, our service fee changes for 2024, we're still in the, in the middle of that process. You know, my hope is we don't see any major, major changes that we see on our staff side. We feel that we're in a pretty good place. Uh, over this last year and with the number of staff members that we have. We've seen a lot of great hiring and, and we continue to do a good job with staff retention. I'll talk about that in, in a little bit. But um, we will we'll keep you posted. We're in the middle of putting our information down on paper. We communicate that to Life Care Services. You know, we, we kind of sharpen the pencil. And then eventually we, we also have the Rolling Green Village Board review that before it's finalized as well. So. We will finalize that by the end of October because um, any type of service fee changes, we need to give 60 days advance notice. So as we're getting to the middle of September, which is hard to believe, we're not that far off from, from October. So I want to make sure you knew that that process is underway and, and we'll, I'll, I'll share with you more as we get more information. A couple of other updates. I was visiting with Skip a little bit ago and, and there's a couple of items he wanted me to share and if there's questions, he can answer those for you. Um, you may see uh, some trucks, I believe, or a large truck that's going to be doing some drilling to evaluate soil. So as we look and, and, and start to determine if we're going to grow, if we're going to add on housing, we're going to be doing some different uh, geotechnical or geosampling in, uh, in the ground to see if we were to dig and if we were to build um, is the, is the ground underneath stable enough to build a structure on. So that's called geosampling. There's going to be some drilling that will be done. Maybe 20 different locations. One of them may be pretty close to the current pickleball court. I just want you to be aware um, that that's going to probably happen here over the next couple of weeks. Um, so we won't know what the results are until an evaluation is done. They're taking samples in different parts of the community. There is still no decision yet to say, yes, we're going to move forward, but this is part of that process to understand uh, what type of work would need to be done if we do end up moving forward. So we're still a little ways off of a decision, which would likely come maybe early next year, March, April-ish. But as far as the due diligence, that's, that's the next step. So I want to make sure folks know when they see a big truck that has a drill that's going down into the ground, 6, 10, 14 feet, that's what that's about. Uh, and again, all different parts of, of the campus, um, not just one location. Um, we do continue to have really strong interest in folks moving to Rolling Green. I believe uh, the wait list is above 80 uh, for folks that would want to come. So eight zero people have put down a thousand dollar deposit to say you know, that they'd like to live here if we if we do have new housing. So. We do continue to see really solid interest. Um, and again, this is just that next step of our, uh, of our discovery into if we're gonna move forward. And then the wood shop, we are interested in uh, adding uh, a small building out there to support the wood shop folks. There's been a, a wood shop club that has been working for probably a little too long on adding a building. So we're getting closer to, uh, to getting that in place. We just wanna make sure that it fits uh, with the style and make sure everything looks consistent with the current wood shop, but that is going to be an extra little small building that would allow for storage of extra material, potentially temporary storage for somebody that's working on a wood shop project. 
So my hope is in the next few weeks that we'll see that move forward, um, but uh, just more to come on that. So if folks know there already has been a little small area next to the wood shop that has been cleared out for some time, that would be that where that small building would be. So it's, it's coming and we're just working on those final details. I, my hope is by next meeting we'll, we'll be really close. I didn't want to spring it on you next meeting and say, hey, this is coming tomorrow. So, but we're, we're continuing to visit on that. So that's it for, the, for my updates. Just want to visit real quick about the financials. We had a really good month again. So we continue to see that our revenues um, actually came in above what we expected, 71,000 above. Our expenses came in slightly over what we had planned for. One of the primary reasons for this, we did have some sprinkler leaks in our Cedars Assisted Living, actually multiple sprinkler leaks over multiple periods of time. So when there's a sprinkler system up in the ceiling, we have some aging plumbing. Uh, and when that plumbing springs a leak, the system has to be taken down. And when you have 30 year old plumbing, it's very unique. So we had to actually order plumbing. We had to wait for it to come. So we actually had to have a person on watch you know, until that was repaired. So we saw an increase in some of our overtime wages because folks were having to cover it for multiple, multiple days. We saw an increase in some of those emergency repairs to make sure that the that the plumbing was fixed. How many different leaks did we have, Skip, in total? It was total. We wound up replacing four sections of pipe. We get one out and then get it back online and then nothing would break out someplace else. So yeah, it is it is an aging infrastructure, one that we know that we need to address, one that we're not able to do right now, but it is something that we're continuing to uh, to make sure that we plan for. So that is one of the big reasons why our expenses you know came in came in uh, over what we had planned, but we did still exceed what we had planned um, for our income for the month of $51,000 above that. And again, those funds go back into, you know, reinvested into the organization to help us with some of those projects like the sprinkler system. Um, another big project that we're putting together plans for is the fire, uh, fire panel system as well. We have 30 some year old fire panels that are no longer being developed and or supported and or parts are being made. So if one of those goes down, it's gonna be really difficult. So we're continuing to create those contingencies and in, in doing our discovery to make sure we have the right fire panels and the right suppression system because that safety piece is really, really important to us. So I want to share a quick, I know Anna Grace, you know, I, I think she hit me with that resident engagement story um, but I wanted to share a staff engagement story this week uh, I ran into a couple folks when we came back this week on Tuesday there was 15 of our staff that went down to Columbia South Carolina for a we could call it a team building but also for a an engagement uh, training uh, so it was a great opportunity almost all of the department heads went um, we were uh, Sat in a session that said, how to be the best boss your employees ever had. So it was a great opportunity. We actually took the bus. Uh, there was one, one extra car that went, but we took the bus. Uh, Stan, we're grateful for Stan. He actually drove us all down. We made sure that he got lunch with us as well. We went to uh, Still Hope's retirement community, Still Hope's Episcopal retirement community, which is in Columbia, West Columbia. So it was a full day event. We left here a little bit before seven actually after seven because Skip didn't show up until seven <laughs> but, um, and we got back at about 5 15 it was it really was good um, there was some there was some great quality content uh, one of the things which which struck me that had me say hey you know we need to do this we need to go as a team we need to invest in our people because uh, it's really really important uh, I want to read this to you that which is on the on the form here it says according to Gallup research 70%, 70 of an employee's engagement is determined by their relationship with their direct supervisor. It says a great manager is a combination of warmth and strength. So in the session, we learned seven practical ways to increase employee enthusiasm and commitment. And uh, this gentleman, Del Gilbert, um, has a direct model of corrective feedback. But it was a, it was a really great day. Um, I love this one quote, which some folks have heard and some haven't. He's, he was talking about, you know, as you're working with employees, sometimes people aren't on the right 
right spot on the bus. We talked about Jim Collins, good to great, you know, and the importance of having having the people on the bus and making sure on the right seat. Um, the uh, the quote that he had, which is pretty, which I was just chuckling about, and I heard a couple different times, says, "You can teach a turkey to climb a tree, but it's easier to hire a squirrel." <laughs> I really thought that was, that was pretty good. You can teach a turkey to climb a tree, but it's easier to hire a squirrel. So he had a bunch of quotes, but that was the one that kind of struck with me. Um, I hadn't heard that one before. I Googled it, and it was in a Harvard Business Review article a couple of years ago, but I just thought it was really, really kind of funny. Um, but we learned a lot. You know, Lindsay was there, Amy was there, Shannon was there, Anna Grace, Skip. Uh, it was a great opportunity to, to come together as a team, um, driving up and back, and also learn a little bit too, so it was good. That was all that I had, and I'm going to open up for some questions. I'm sorry I only have about 10 minutes, but if there's more questions, I'm happy to visit with you all one-on-one. -on -one. So, who has the first question? This is probably for Skip. What is that cherry picker out in the... Uh, oh, the cherry picker in the parking lot. Yeah. We are cutting down a few trees. Skip's good at that. <laughs> and um, I tease him, but it's true. Um, Skip, can you tell him there's, a, there's some tree work that we're doing? Well, um, I, think she's ref I think she's referring to the one that's in the back parking lot. If you've noticed, we uh, had a company out at Harper a few years ago. I think it was back in 2015. We redid some siding and the windows and, and things like that. We've discovered a couple of concerns, so Harper uh, came back out and they're working with us on that. We're also working with some forensic engineers to try to figure out what's going on. So they had the chair picker out right here because we worked, we've got, if you see there's a window on the second floor of B building that's taped up. And so that's one of the ones that we're working on and we're not going to take, you know, so we're waiting for them to come back out with a solution and we'll review the solution and see if it's going to be viable so we can do the repair. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's not the trees, but I want to have him talk about the trees. But before that, you know, so we did redo roofs, windows, and siding here at Rolling Green in 2016. We started to notice a couple of issues with windows um, that are leaking from that install. So we've reached out to Harper, they've been great. We're visiting with them, we're hiring some engineers, subject matter engineers, to help us to say, hey, this is what the situation is. We're still at the early stages, but there may be and likely be more windows that we open up because we do think that there's something that we've got to, got to remedy. So we're in the early stages of that, but that's that's the cherry picker. Do you want to talk about the trees real quick? Well, we've had uh, some trees, one over by EP that we had to take down because it was blocking the emergency exit. It's been there for so long. EP was built in 98. It's heaved the sidewalk up so we couldn't get the exit door open. So that was a safety, life safety issue. So they finished taking that yesterday. The other thing, we uh, have trimmed up a couple of magnolia trees that was on each side of Cedars that's in the front admin parking lot right out here So sort because of, they were getting all clustered up. We've got two, three behind the cottages, but we couldn't get the equipment in because behind there was so wet. Uh, we'll be doing that. And then we've got a couple over in Morningside that we'll probably be working on next week or so whenever the owner gets back in town because those are couple of safety issues close to houses so we want to make sure that he's there to manage that but I also want to point out there are 1800 lock lolly pines that are growing mm -hmm. in our area back here that we worked with the forestry service on when we we took those down because we, we had pine beetle issues and so those are growing you were give skip credit my, for that I'm, I'm proud of my trees back there so <laughs> yeah. you see me up there on the hillside I'm, I'm checking on my babies <laughs> so he did cut down the trees and didn't really tell many people about it, but then he did come up with a solution to help us replant trees, which is which is a great solution that we replanted. Um, you know, I think it's it, it's a really smart idea. Bob and, and Skip were able to work with the U.S. Department of Forestry to get them planted. And they're coming up. If you see them, they're, they're pretty good, pretty good number of trees back there. So. I remember we put it in. There was a resident who actually had a tree farm in the in the Pacific mid Pacific uh, Northwest, and um, we couldn't get him out there yet because they were just planted. But he would he would love to go out there and check out those trees. So he was in the health center at the time. Who has another question? Yes. Okay. I saw this hand first. Right, a few. Just a second. I'll, I'll be over there. I'll work my way over there. 
All right, skip, skipping this is for you. Oh. The, the, the uh, walking path along the lake on Lakeside. I know we had some money in the budget to improve it. Now what are we going to do with it? <laughs> yeah, let me start with that. I know Skip and I discussed it. We did have to shut down the sidewalk. Um, we have engaged a structural engineer, civil engineer, gray engineering, who we've worked with um, through, the, through the expansion here. Uh, there's also going to be, what, what's the other firm that's going to look at it, Skip? Uh, it, it's a geotech engineer which studies soil compaction because we're concerned about the edge of it from mm -hmm. all the undermining of the lake that's mm -hmm. done to that. So they're going to be evaluating that. So that's what we're waiting on. So then they do the assessment, then they'll give us a written report and recommendations. Mm -hmm. So Skip and I have been in touch with the folks from Lakeside to let them know. You know, we know it's definitely a concern, a safety concern, and it's one that we want to start off with really understanding how much of a concern, you know, what, what type of uh, work needs to be done, and we'll be collaborating with the folks from Lakeside once we get some of these reports back to determine what kind of issue we have, and then we need to come up with a plan to remedy it. We do have that on a on a short list to address. You know, Skip and I visited about it. He showed me a picture. So it is a it's another project in a long list of projects that we're we'll working through. Uh, we know that we need to take down the tree. We also then we need to cut out that area of the drive and, and fix that. So yes, we are aware and we do have that down as a as a project and we're just prioritizing from there. So. Yeah, we are aware. And I do, I do want to be honest and open, okay? That pine tree will have to come down because if we go in and cut that root system out, it will kill the pine tree. So, so that's cut down another what, tree. That's what, I'll get that up. Full disclosure here. He's got 1,800 that he's already planted. <laughs> Thank you. Just a comment on the, the feedback with the gym. I did notice, I think we might have put a, some type of a table in there. It is a little bit tight, a little cozy. And I think it is something we need to look at to make sure that uh, we do have safe walkways between equipment. So I think that's a great point. Something we need to look at. Let me see Amy and Katie over here from the team that can help me with that. Signage, and signage has always been an issue here with the new new buildings we did refresh the signage. I still think there's more that can be done. I also know, I think David Shoplin had helped us create a new map, which is really pretty nice. I think there's uh, one external that you can check. I believe it's at the front desk, Lindsay, is that right? Yep, she's nodding her head, yes. There is a new map um, that shows a lot of the external uh, amenities that we have, but I also believe they're working on an internal map too. So I know that's something that, that David Shoplin, a project that he's working on, to help us. We are a, a big campus and it can be hard to find your way around. 
Uh, and I think we can do a better job of, of that. So I, I definitely hear where you're coming from. Thank you. Next question. Just a second. I'll be back to you. Ryan, in anticipation of the upcoming survey, is this survey of each resident or each household? It's, uh, I believe it's resident, each resident. In the past, I believe there was some confusion, um, but it's each, each resident. So we did a full, um, a full look within our records to see how many did we order? Was it 750, somewhere in that ballpark. So yes, every single resident and every single household, we wanna hear from you. Um, so each individual will fill that out. Primarily to you, I think, Skip, uh, concern about the trees in the courtyard and also about the total development of the court. This is, uh, yeah, we can hear you. Oh, it is? Yep. Okay. Uh, the total development of the courtyard. If I can jump in first, um, I know that we, we are going to be putting together a committee of folks to look at the village green, the courtyard. Um, Skip and I have discussed, we'd like to start, we know we need to do some work, we'd like to start with looking at, again, I'm going to come back to the theme, uh, taking down a few trees. <laughs> so Skip is going to help us with that. Um, we're, we're hopeful of probably a November project-ish. It's at that time, but we want to start off by you know looking at the trees, and then we'll be visiting with a small, small committee of residents that are stakeholders there to talk about what do we want that space to look like as far as the structure, as far as paths, as far as plantings. So we're going to start first with the trees, and then we're going to kind of pause and take a breath, and then we're going to create a, a plan as well to look at those other aspects of the village green. Um, before the new the new spaces, I would walk through the village green as I parked out in that area, and I think it's a really, it's it's kind of a, a hidden gem on campus that um, that could look and feel a lot different. So it's it's important, and we are going to create and focus on that project. Skip, what else would you add? Well, since I've gotten run over so many times here about trees at all, I will tell you that I have been working with Snyder Tree, and I think y'all are familiar with him, the arborist and all. And, uh, you know, we are doing things like deep root fertilization and working with them on, on the trees throughout the commons, throughout the cottages and all. But what we will, uh, what we will be doing probably is to make some recommendations about thinning some of the branches out because they've grown together, which impedes the trees from maturing the way they should. And there's a couple they talk about that we might take down. But we are working with them. These are not decisions that, that we're coming up with and say we just need to do it to do it. We're getting assessments from the experts on how to approach that, and how to do that, the longevity of those. And then some of that, too, is going to depend on the committee and how we move forward with developing that area. Other questions? That's a good, very good question. I'm going to stop with the tree joke, Skip. I'm done. That's I'm sorry. Hey, that, that's all right. Wait till next month. We're, we're, we're switching from weeds, from trees to weeds. Trees to weeds, uh huh. We came out the other day and looked at our house, and they sent a tractor to the right to clear it. Well, not to clear it, but they left our house. Uh huh. Are they afraid of our weeds? Or the Are they afraid of their weeds? We already had, I had a snake in the house. And the snake in the front room. Mm. It bothers her. Don't bother me. I yeah. No, I, that's the one thing I don't like is snakes. So there was a question that I received this week from a couple of residents around that. Um, you know, I learned that we, we were able to obtain a, a bush hog, an attachment for our tractor that we have. And uh, a project that Skip was working on um, was getting us to go back there when the when the area dried out to be able to bush hog that space on the back side of Summerside. So that's my understanding, I don't know if he's, if he's gonna be going back, was he got everything that he could with that bush hog equipment, the pull behind on the tractor. Prior to this, we didn't have that type of equipment. So we'd like to do that once a year to help keep some of that overgrowth and those weeds down. 
So I don't know if he was not able to get to there because it was wet. Um, but uh, Skip, do you have any other feedback? Well, part of it is, one, that area is a wetland as you get closer to the hardness down in there. Uh, we've had unusually dry temperatures, as you've known, so we've been able to explore further than we normally have. But we've actually been, sort of been working on this for several years, doing a little bit each year and, as we can uh, through the generous donation of that old bush hog we've got. We're able to get in there, and thanks to Brett for doing that. But that's we're not going to do any hand work. It's all about what we can do on the tractor with the bush hog because it's just not, you know, from, from a, just a, a standpoint of trying somebody out there with weed trimmers and trying to do that. It's just it's too costly and, and not productive. So we will continue to do that. Part of where you're talking about, we can't get it up in there. And the slope and the grades and stuff like that. But please keep in mind, um, y'all, you know, you've got your property line, but then you've got about a 10 foot, 10 to 12 foot clearance that sort of comes down that uh, Summerside landscapers working in conjunction with Rotary Green Village was cutting that 10 to 12. We would pay for part of the cuttings and Summerside would pay for part of the cutting. That, con that goes back to an agreement Bob had and I think it was about, was it 15 or 16, Ryan? I'm thinking when that was, that was occurring. Know. So we've been, we, we've tried to take it out beyond that. The other thing that, uh, if, you know, if you notice, some of those trees and some of those weeds are brown or dying and that's because Duke Power has companies come in periodically to spray that to keep the stuff down. So we, we try to stay ahead of that the more we work it, the more it gets it gets it so we get in there and, and do that easier. Because trying to get that done through the years has been it's been an ongoing process. We able to so that's that's what we're doing. So we'll continue to do that about once a year and also depending on how wet those areas are at the time. Who has the next question? We're a little bit after four. All right. Well, again, I thank you. I've enjoyed these. It's been a little bit over 90 days. I'm, I'm grateful. Um, I've enjoyed being out and about and getting to know folks, and, and um, we'll continue to do that as much as uh, much as I'm able. But it's been a great transition. And grateful to be here. So, Pat, what do you have? Uh, I had an early doctor's appointment a couple of weeks ago, and I was waiting on medical transportation between D&E and, e and Rotary and it was a little cool that morning and humid so I went inside of the E building to take refuge of the air conditioning as I opened the door to go in there was a baby snake mm -hmm. trying to get in the E building <laughs> <laughs> needless to say I didn't pick him up but he was a little he was a skinny thing mm -hmm. but he was about three feet long mm -hmm. but I did call Ann in maintenance and let her know when I got yeah. back to the doctor that day yeah yeah, that does happen. I have to tell you, I, I think some people know the story about snakes. Um, one last thing, I'll let y'all go. But you know, folks know Mary Jo Lohmeyer, right? Yes. She, she actually was here a couple weeks ago for Katie's shower, baby shower. And her first day here, she sat down at her desk and she said, Ryan, I think I have a snake underneath, underneath my, my desk. I'm like, Are you sure? You know, I'm kind of... That, that, no, that can't be. We had some of these, um, some of the, uh, you know, they're, they're sticky, sticky little, uh, sticky little uh, plastic uh, tents that are there typically for, for spiders. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll come over and check it out. It actually was a little small snake. It wasn't three feet. But I felt so horrible. First day on the job, <laughs> and she had a snake underneath. And it was alive, so I actually you know, I took it. It was barely moving. Um, we do have some of those geckos, those little green salamanders that will try to come in through some of the doors. So, And we've heard some shrieks up here. Rose and, and Amy are smiling because they've had a few of them. Change of seasons, the lights, and you know different things. They feel the cool air. It does happen. Let us know. We do have a pest control company to try to prevent some of those things, but it does happen. And I was so embarrassed when, when she, it was really a snake because I thought it was maybe a worm or something. I'm mean, sure it's not a worm. It was a snake and it was alive, and I, you know, I took my foot out of my mouth. For sure. um, right. We miss Mary Jo. We yes. had a snake on third floor F building. Oh wow! And I called maintenance, and it was going down the hallway against the wall. A snake on third floor F building. Third floor F building, and I was told by 
You sure it's not a black wire? Uh huh. <laughs> Kept moving. Yeah. Yeah. How, how that I don't know. Snake. You're right. You're right. Makes you wonder sometimes. Well, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Have a good day.